Welcome back. Amazingly, in the midst of a live Sundance television program, I have just gotten two dates to the Ice Castles. So things are going fantastically already this morning on In the Can. I'm here with John Abood and Michael Colton, and they have been laboring lovingly with a story about Doug Kenny. You may have heard back in the day of a little publication called The National Lampoon. They were lucky enough to make a movie or two and also entered the firmament of comedy. Doug Kenny is portrayed by Will Forte, and the film is a futile and stupid gesture. Good morning, fellow. Good morning. Good to be here. Thank, thank you for the ice castles. That's no problem. Like, Great. It's really making my springtime magical. Let's just hurry this up so we can get. There. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's wrap this movie. up. Yeah. And before your next interview and screening. <laughs> yeah, the castles. So we were talking a little bit, and congratulations, thank by you. the thank way. Thank you very just much. Amazing and fantastic, and, and I've just, I'm so excited <laughs> oh, to have you guys here. Just a little, you know, touching greatness. Sure. It's a thank thing you. I get to do in my mm -hmm. line of work, and you've, you've made this film. As we discussed, I haven't had a chance to see the film yet. That being said, you can bet your bottom dollar that I will be <laughs> probably watching this six or eight or ten times Great. because of, of the history, not just of Doug Kenny, but of the National Lampoon and of uh, all of these characters characters that are played also famous people legendary people played by famous people yes. Yes. and right. uh, since 2006 talk a little bit about sure. the development yeah. process well the movie is about this guy Doug Kenny like you said he co-founded the National Lampoon magazine in the early 70s uh, co-wrote Animal House and Caddyshack and then died mysteriously at age 33 and so became the sort of forgotten cultural figure and we were always fascinated by it and uh, in 2006 we started talking about doing a movie about it and we were a little daunted by the research aspect and then John looked on Amazon and said there's actually a biography coming out next week and we thought that was very uh, seemed like a sign <laughs> maybe we were onto something here and that book yeah. was called The Futile and Stupid Gesture which is a line from Animal House and it was written by Josh Karp and we started this journey of optioning the book pitching it writing it on spec we brought in David Wayne to direct and then we started attaching talent and then Fast forward 12 years, finally got Netflix <laughs> on board, and then it all came together very quickly at the end and put this amazing cast together. Yeah. And you've, even just from seeing a little bit of film, you've created this world that, I, I, for, my, for my estimation, really captures this, uh, th there's a combination of, of course, there's sort of the zany, madcap aspect to the story and to the the way that things like National Lampoon get created, right. but there's also, just like you guys have had the experience of, it's really hard work. Yeah. My dad always used to say, the harder I work, the luckier I get. <laughs> and, and Some to of put it's just showing up. Some <laughs> of it's just showing up and putting in the hours. I mean, we've always said that this movie isn't really a comedy, it's a tragedy about funny people. And so we wanted to show all the effort, all the work, all the pain that went into this incredible success they had, this explosion that changed the sensibility of the country. Uh, Josh Karp, who wrote the book, phrased it as, Doug Kenny and the National Lampoon helped take the country from worshiping John Wayne to worshiping John Stewart. So there was a huge shift that these people brought about and we wanted to try to show the behind the scenes of that. And talk about integrating characters. Of course, it's a it's a universe. It really, mm -hmm. it's kind of kind of. It's like it, the Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah very it's much. the very National much. Lampoon Extended um, Universe. We're going to do spin-offs. We'll do the Belushi yeah. movie and it's then the, the Agents show. of Comedy. Exactly. Yeah. The Ann Beats movie. I'm going to see Ann Beats take down Thanos. It's going to be incredibly <laughs> yeah. exciting. Crossover yeah. possibilities. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. I see a Burger King deal. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so natural. Yeah. That deal will do itself. Yeah. yeah. But there is a challenge, not only in... Mom, I want the Michael O'Donoghue <laughs> cup. <laughs> Where is Harold Ray? Yeah, exactly. Where is he in this story? Putting this universe of characters into the frame for a coherent story and in yeah. the end you say oh well this is a great moment and this is a great moment and you can stitch all these moments together yeah. and go oh, I don't really get where well, this is coming out. Ultimately the story the but movie. See, that's where great writing comes <laughs> in. Ooh, <laughs> fortunately sauce. The, uh, John and Mike <laughs> on the scene. <laughs> the, uh, the movie is ultimately the story of Doug Henney and mostly his relationship with his co-founder Henry Beard. Uh, they did the magazine together. And through that we explore all these other aspects. They start a radio hour and they bring in uh, John Belushi, Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, Gilda Radner, Harold Ramis, uh, Christopher, Guest. Christopher Guest. And so there are all these tangents but as we discovered in the editing process we ultimately kept winnowing it to just the character story of Doug. So you know there's, we have some fun with Belushi and we meet Gilda but ultimately it's not their story. And, 
there are plenty of stories that can be done with them as well, but we, we found the more we stayed close to Will Forte's character, the better the movie turned out. The, the scope and the scale of what you could tell was daunting, so ultimately focusing on this very core relationship was kind of our way forward. And I think also doing justice to someone who, if, if we could assemble all of those characters, the Belushis and the Gilda Radners, and, yeah. and that list goes on and on, and say, you, you know, who was the guy, who was the glue, and they all go, oh man, we, we all follow Doug Kenny. Well, right. that was fascinating right. to us. So many people you know Animal House, Caddyshack, Saturday Night Live, which sprung out of this, but even people we know who are like diehard comedy nerds, yeah. and we said we're doing a movie about Doug Kenny, they're like, who? Wow. So it is a sort of forgotten figure, and, and while the movie is entertaining, it's also like, it's like a chapter of comedy history to us. To for, for decades, Doug Kenny was a name in the credits of you know, two iconic movies, but very few people knew who that was, the story behind the story, and it's a really dramatic and interesting one. And one of the numbers, and I try not to reduce films to, to statistics. Let's talk marketing. Yeah. No, let's do it. Let's Go get right it. to the important <laughs> stuff. Back to the Burger King stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The guy was 33 years old? Yeah. 33. Same yeah. age uh, John Belushi died, same age uh, Chris Farley died. Um, yeah, I mean, he had so much success at such a young age. They, uh, they were bought out of the company contractually, yeah. I think, at age 27, and he was already, you know, multi-millionaire multi um, and sort of adrift. Um, but, you know, the movie gets into L.A. in the 70s, there's a lot of drugs. I mean, it's, you know, we tried to not make it the cliched, bio, cliched biopic of that, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a crazy story of, of success at an early age. And it's, and it's asking the sort of central question of, you know, how does someone who is so obsessed with topping himself top himself? And that pressure ultimately, we feel, kind of is what sort of brought about the end of his life. Well, he had great success with National Lampoon Magazine. Then Saturday Night Live came out and kind of stole the thunder. They um, used a lot of the talent of the National Lampoon. They, they used a lot of the writers. Um, so then Doug goes and does Animal House, becomes the biggest comedy of all time. But then he, you know, started to feel that he wasn't going to be able to top himself. In fact, there's a great anecdote in the book that we put in the movie. He goes to see the movie Airplane, and it was like he's devastated. Devastated. Right. Like, the, that's the movie I should have made. That's that's and the new thing, and I'm it, nothing. Yeah. So it, that as a writer it was interesting to us. Of like, you can have so much success. And you're still deeply unhappy, you know. There's, it's. So I've written off the possibility of being happy. Yeah, <laughs> we, we are dead inside. That's I protected myself. Saving time, saving <laughs> yeah. so much effort. Just don't need that drama. Straight to the misery. Yeah. <laughs> Let's wallow there. Stay in the mud. <laughs> yeah. It's such an interesting thing to consider someone whose craft is the funny, who suffers from this kind of ultimately, literally debilitating depression, mm -hmm. and yet. The central theme, it, it seems, in the life of this guy who accomplished so much in his young life is drive. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there are quotes from people that knew him in college saying that, you know, he was the most productive of anyone they ever met, you know, despite what he was working on being incredibly silly and fun. You know, he treated it like a job. Um, he would write all hours of the night. We depict in the movie, you know, with a party going on around him at all times, but somehow he's still pounding out the material. The, the ma early years of the magazine, he was writing often a third to a half of the material, some of it under his own name, some of it under no name, you know, just or churning it out, names, and yeah. it sort of burned him out. He actually, as we show in the movie, after a couple of years, the magazine gets super successful and he disappears. He just, he can't take it and he... Can't he, continue at that pace. Yeah. He yeah. didn't tell anyone where he was going, he just left a note. For, he was sharing an apartment with his wife and Henry Beard his co-founder of the magazine, uh, left a note and took off. And for weeks they didn't know where he was. It's a heavy side to the yeah. story and also I think a, a beautiful thing to, to truly focus on and to see and of course uh, names like John Belushi, Chris Farley comes to mind absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. because w we know essentially what a tortured life that, that he led and, and the way in which he suffered in order for us to, to have yeah. inimitable yeah. comedy moments and I think of literally more than one Chris Farley reference uh, during interviews here on this program really? yeah. during Sundance 2018. So wow. that, that, that co-occurring of, of genius and suffering yeah. and, and that pathos had to be, had to be a, a challenge to, to find the right note because in the end you are <laughs> trying to get to marketing. Yeah. You're trying to make a film that a lot of people will want to see. Yeah, I mean, we always say if Doug had lived, I think he would have been like a figure like Judd Apatow or Lorne Michaels, just sort of a comedy, you know, producer and godfather and, and everybody always said he was the smartest and funniest person in the room. So, you know, sad that, that he's not with us. But um, 
you know, thankfully he is sort of with this movie. Talk a little bit yeah. about the decision to use well-known people. Sure. Of course, there are lots of roles that are played yeah. by folks who aren't famous. I mean, but there were a lot of discussions about how to handle that. Um, no one, I think, is super excited about the idea of famous people playing famous people. So we went through a lot of discussions about um, finding people who actually captured the essence of these people didn't necessarily look like them, didn't have to look like them, but had to embody them, had to sort of bring their spirit and their personality life. So you look at um, Joel McHale playing Chevy Chase. Which Joel, is bizarre. But Joel, Joel, yeah, really yeah, yeah. Look I mean, they, they, yeah, they, they work yeah. together in community. When we heard that was happening, we, we looked at each other like, like, wait, is this a joke? It's is amazing. It? I hope this is true. And um, uh, it was true. And what Joel brought to it was a real understanding of Chevy's mannerisms. Right. Uh, he had, he, when Chevy talks to you in person, his voice is here. But when he's performing, his voice goes down. Like, he knew all these aspects of him um, that he was he able to bring to the movie. He would also improvise little bits that we didn't have in the script of just the way, you know, Chevy just is constantly doing bits. And, you know, that he had seen Chevy do, of course, time in together. person. Yeah. And of course, to me, there's the the second layer of the fact that Chevy Chase did Gerald Ford. Right, right, right. And we know, I remember Ford, as a yeah. little kid, yeah. the first time I, I'm like, wait, wait, yeah. wait. Yeah. There's no prosthetic. There's no makeup. It's just Chevy Chase doing yeah. this thing yeah. that ultimately, in some ways, w became inimitable Chevy yeah. Chase. And, and we, that's that's an aspect we love about the movie is that they're able to bring those well-known people to life in ways that you might not have imagined yes. or anticipated. Yeah, we absolutely. also, like we have someone playing Bill Murray, a friend of ours named John Daly auditioned on tape and we saw it and it was such an amazing Bill Murray that we actually wrote more scenes in the movie with Bill Murray. It's like we have to have this. We yeah. have to have more of yeah. this yeah. in the frame. You can never go so wrong having more Bill Murray. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think the entire universe knows. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's yeah. a lot of consensus. Indeed. Yeah. So back to marketing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. Let's talk international. Yes, yeah. yes, let's do. Well, this is a movie, it's already, it's, it's already, um, it's not in competition, it's already Netflix uh, funded, so it's actually gonna, be, it premieres Sundance tonight, but it's gonna be on Netflix on Friday for everybody. Which is a, a, a really satisfying turnaround, I think, for us for us viewers and for people who are, are, are busy and don't have a chance to yeah. go to shows. Right. A, a big I night mean, for you guys. Most people are learning about the movie now as a result of the attention that Sundance brings to it. They'll be able to see it 48 hours later, which is a great, great Boom, it's that yeah. joke that pays off yeah. right yeah. away. Yeah. 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 Thanks so much, you guys. Have a oh, wonderful time. Uh, what time is the premiere and where? I'm Tonight, 9.30 at the Eccles. At the Eccles. Yeah. And, uh, Places that folks can go online to, to find out more. I suppose it's just ubiquitous. See what Netflix to, has yes, to say. Netflix.com. Netflix.com. Add it to your hot list. Add it to your hot list. Add it to your hot list. On it's also your playing Mosaic browser. tomorrow morning at uh, Mark and a couple more uh, Sunday screenings. That's true. Yeah. Listen, yes. I am a hot list. Okay. So okay. <laughs> Noted. Thank you guys so yeah, much for you. being here. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on a wonderful achievement. Thank and you. Thank you. E even with all the hard moments, I know that this is a film that everyone is just going to embrace and so. hug and, so. and, and think yeah. lovingly, not only about the story of the great Doug Kenny and all of the performers around him, but also all of the amazing performers and, of course, the script that the you writing. all put together. Ultimately, <laughs> it's really about the writers. It really is. For some of us more than others. But yeah. Yeah, <laughs> John, Michael, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Have a wonderful time. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Park City See you at the Ice Castles. <laughs> I have a date. I have dates. We're going to serious up just a little bit. We're going to talk about one of the great artists, certainly one of the great female artists of all time, who is depicted in the film Kusama right after this.